Hi guys, that's On Review Guy here, and on today's episode of Charts in the Past, we look back at the 10 biggest selling singles of the 30th of August 1975. Kicking things off at number 10 is If You Know How to Love Me by Smokey. Courtesy of the Yorkshire based rock group who's been active since 1974, Smokey's career as a group has been incredibly colourful. Originally starting off as a four piece in 1964 and going under multiple names until their big break in 74, which included the Yen, the Sphinx and Essence before becoming a five piece in 1986 with none of its original members remaining except for bass player and vocalist Terry Utterly although he temporarily left the group for two years during the early days the group have dropped 21 studio albums only two of which ever cracked the album charts have 12 top 20 singles under their belts with this one being their joint most successful track before going into this song, I had no idea who this group were until I saw that this is the same group who gave us the song Living Next to Alice, a song that is one of the most unbearable songs to ever blow the radio, but that's for another time. For now, we'll deal with this track, which picked at number three and impressively enough, stayed there for nine weeks. The song starts off with two lovers taking a motorbike ride through a town which eventually leads to the two ending up on a beach. Highlighting that the guy believes that the girl wants to live on his so-called wildlife, although nothing in any way, shape or form indicates what this life involves. He still needs moulding into a better person and asks her if she has what it takes to do so. This song is pretty bland and uninteresting. Then again, that pretty much sums up this group in general. The vocal delivery is unenthused, the instrumentation is dreary soft rock that doesn't excite or inspire anything of any interest, and the lead singer um, alright, I know I'm the last person to rag on on how a person looks, but wildlife, this guy, ah, uh, no way. At number 9 is Summertime City by Mike Batt with New Edition. Born Michael Philip Batt in 1949, this man is pretty much a legend in the world of music. A musician, director, producer, songwriter, conductor and deputy director for the PBI. What this man has done in his lifetime eclipses some of the greats. He's conducted many of the world's greatest orchestras, wrote the song Bright Eyes, which was used in Watership Down, has worked with the likes of Elton John, Steely Eye Span and Justin Haywood, discovered Kate Melua, has produced many albums and written songs for the likes of Cliff Richard, Alvin Stardust and Art Garfunkel, and made an absolute killing in the 70s, creating the Wombles and reaping the from that. The lyrics for Summertime City are about a man who laps up the simple enjoyment of living in his part of the boulevard. The sun shining constantly, warm temperatures, relaxing on the beach, yet notes that despite the luxury of this lifestyle, his lady love lives somewhere else that isn't his part of town and through song encourages her to come down to Summertime City because, as he says, Summertime City ain't got the summertime blues. Catchy chorus aside, this song actually isn't all that bad to be honest. The vocal delivery is decent enough along with the background vocalists, courtesy of the Boston based R&B and pop group New Edition, and the instrumentation is lively with plenty of character. Starting off with clean electric guitars along with percussion, synth, bass and a horn section throughout, electric piano sprinkled here and there, and a saxophone solo in the instrumental break, all in all makes for a fun little summer song. At number 8 is Barbados by Typically Tropical. The British duo consisting of Jeff Calvert and Max West, this infamous one hit wonders career pretty much nosedived after this song hit the top spot. This hit came as a surprise to the duo after they were initially signed up to drop only three singles. But after Barbados achieved the number one status, every other track afterwards failed to even chart. Not even their one and only album, Barbados Sky caught any fire. Its sale figures, by all accounts, be measly at best. The duo continues to make music under different names, but none that I could find made any impact whatsoever. And to be honest, it's not really that much of a surprise, because needless to say, this song is pretty cringeworthingly bad. It's two pasty-faced white people slapping on fake Caribbean accents, lyrics that are constructed with the least amount of effort possible, and pretty much fall flat within the first few seconds. Coconut Airways? Really? Okay, yeah, 
It's already an established aviation company, but that wasn't until 2007. Is it unreasonable to find that just a little bit stereotypical? Plus, the incredibly lightweight Caribbean-style instrumentation that's so cluttered it's hard to tell what instruments are being played. And the vocals that are layered with this echo effect to try and hide the fact that the lead singer's voice is so boring and characterless is hilarious in and it of itself. Oh, and it was the inspiration for the future number one hit for the Venga Boys. Yeah. So, uh... Jeff, Max, thanks guys. Your brief 15 minutes of fame led to another group's 15 minute of fame. Good going. At number seven is The Best Thing That Ever Happened To Me by Gladys Knight and The Pips. Active from 1953 to 1989, this Atlanta-based R&B soul-based family group have an incredible history, winning a buttload of American Music Awards, a few Grammy Awards, and have been inducted into Music Hall of Fame from 88 through to 2009. Actually, an act that is this legendary in the Motown genre, much like many acts of the same genre, their success in the UK was infinitesimal compared to their success in the US. Dropping 20 studio albums, only three charted here in the UK, 17 in the US, scored just eight top 20 singles in the UK, with this peaking at number seven. Much like a lot of this group's songs, this one was a cover, having started off as a number one hit country song by Ray Price in 1973, before finding its way into the group's catalogue of work. The lyrics are about Gladys' appreciation for her man, highlighting that during the tough times in her life, the times where she was down and hurting, she was able to make it through those times all because of her fella. Further showing her appreciation by stating that should anyone ever write her life story, that he'd be there through all the pain and glory. It's standard, could have done with a lot more emotion in the delivery, the background vocals probably wouldn't have been missed if they weren't here, and the instrumentation is alright. Along with finger-picked and strummed acoustic guitars, soft percussive drums that build up in the chorus, piano, string and brass section, it's a nice song. Nothing special or incredible, just nice. At number six is Blanket on the Ground by Billy Joe Spears. Born Billy Jean Spears in 1937 in Beaumont, Texas, Spears' career began at the tender age of 13, releasing the song Too Old for Toys, Too Old for Boys on an independent label. She wouldn't go on to release another song until 66, and from then on out, she went on to release 18 studio albums where only one charted in the UK albums charts and released 48 singles only two making the top ten here, with this track being Billy's second most commercially successful track. Despite having made virtually no impact on the charts here, then again country music has never made much of an impact on the UK charts, she managed to maintain quite a following in these parts. Accompanied by bright acoustic guitar strumming, bass line and drums, the song involves the female lead reflecting on the times where her and her now husband would spend part of their youth where the two of them would slip off down to the nearest river, along with a blanket where they would get down to doing whatever it is the young people get down to doing when they're alone, suggesting that the two of them would go ahead and repeat these actions in their adulthood. Overall, it's a charming, simple little song that has plenty of appeal. Can't complain, really. At number five is That's The Way I Like It by KC and the Sunshine Band. One of the most popular and well-known acts of the disco and funk genre, fronted by lead man Harry Wayne KC, KC and the Sunshine Band's career spans a total of three decades, starting from 1973 until their first breakup in 85, before reforming in 1993, where they continue to this very day. This group have dropped 13 studio albums, with only two breaking the top 50 over here, have released 49 singles, where 15 have charted, five breaking the top 20, with one single hit in the top spot. That's the way I like it, is perhaps their most well-known piece of work. Released in June 75, this song picked at number before has been covered by a myriad of acts including Westlife, Dead or Alive and Giorgio Moroder and has been used in multiple forms of media. This track is known for being one of those songs that's constructed out of as few words as feasibly possible and stuck on repeat over and over. This song, which basically is a sex song as the lyrics suggest, uses the aha uh -huh a total of 84 times, the do's are sung 72 times, and on the single version of this song, both verses last a total of 34 seconds on what is a 2 minute 58 second track. Having said that though, as much as I can't stand songs that have minimal lyrical creativity, much like this song, it's impossible to hate. And honestly, it's the music that brings this song together. 
The vocals are fantastic too, no doubt about that, but the vibrancy of the brass section, the way that the drums pop, and the slight hint of electric guitars if you listen intently, and the slick bass line in the back that thankfully doesn't get drowned out, coupled with the hook, is insatiable, irresistible, and undoubtedly a timeless track and one that never gets old. At number four is It's Been So Long by George McRae. With a career spanning a total of 47 years, this Florida-born soul singer's career, much like many of the acts on this list, has been very limited in terms of their success on this side of the pond. Despite his first official single topping the charts in 13 different countries, he's only managed to score two more top 10 singles with this song being his second most commercially successful. He's released 15 studio albums where the first two charted, is a Grammy-nominated artist, and personally, one of the more underrated soul artists. Sure, he's got a few hits to his name, but honestly, I feel he deserved much better than what he got. Although this may not be George's best track, it's lyrically simplistic. In fact, you could argue it's too simplistic. It's decent enough to make a passable track. Complete with percussion and a horn section, the song in its entirety is a serenade to the Lady of McRae's affection claiming that it's been such a long time since the two have seen each other that they should skip pleasantries and just get straight to business. Atta boy George, no messing, just straight to the sex. I'd say that the guy deserved much better, mainly because of his voice. It's full of richness and soul and I particularly like the little tremolo effect that he has, but I especially love the falsetto that he delivers at the end. You travel along through the track, minding your own business and all of a sudden the sweeping falsetto hits and you're left pretty much speechless. So yeah, a great voice that deserved more than what he got. At number three is The Last Farewell by Roger Whittaker. Born in Nairobi in 1936, Roger Whittaker's 50 plus career is littered with much success, although his chart record in the UK would beg to differ. Starting off as a club singer, originally having been called up for national service before leaving to become a teacher, before being signed to Fontana Records in 1962, this man's achieved five top 20 singles, with this one being his most successful, peaking at number two. Has released 38 studio albums, over half of them released solely in Germany, where his career flourished more than any other country where almost all of his songs charted in the top 100. Has earned over 250 silver, gold and platinum albums in his career and has won a handful of awards in his time. The song has a very nautical theme to it. As for what this song is about, that's kind of tricky because Depending on whom you ask, the song can easily have different meanings. On the one hand, the song could be about a man setting sail back to his place where he came from, leaving behind the woman that he loves and her part of the world. Another interpretation could be the telling of a protagonist setting sail to go fight in a war and is preparing for what could be his final journey, the memories of war and death surrounding him as he travels. Or it could be about a sailor battling through the rough tides on a journey into the night and long to, to return back to his native England. Regardless of your interpretation, one thing's for sure, it's a very pretty and moving song. Complete with electric and acoustic guitars, drums which do become militant once the second verse comes around, piano, a brass and string section that are accompanied by female backing vocals, but this song is one that was, in my opinion, cruelly robbed of the top spot. All courtesy of this next track. At number two is Sailing by Rod Stewart. Here's a little fun fact for you viewers. I like Rod Stewart. No, seriously, I do. Yeah, he may come off as cheesy and smaltzy to many, but I do have a fondness for his work. One of the biggest selling artists of all time, with a career spanning almost 55 years, the guy has sold over 100 million records worldwide, has six consecutive number one albums here in the UK, has dropped 62 singles, 31 entered the top 10 in the UK, with six reaching the number one spot, including this one, has been inducted into numerous music hall of fames, won a Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to Music in 1993, has been part of numerous groups that include Steam Packet, Shotgun Express and the Jeff Beck Group, is widely regarded by popular magazine publications as one of the greatest singers of all time and was awarded a CBE in 2007. So, it seems like everything and anything you can be awarded with Rod Stewart has acclaimed. Sailing, originally written by Gavin Sutherland, vocalist and bassist of the group The Sutherland Brothers in 1972, is one of Rod Stewart's most successful tracks globally. And I'm going to be honest here, I hate this song. 
I honestly can't stand it. Personally, I can't stand this style of Rod Stewart. The guy is way better than this track. It's schmaltzy, glitzy, soft rock that is given way too much gravitas for lyrics that don't deserve such. One minute he's sailing, the next he's flying. Which one is it? For me, Stewart is not a ballad man, and here he is trying way too hard for a song that didn't deserve to be redone. I find the original to be far superior. The low bass heavy drone throughout gives a more fitting feeling and dynamic to the song. Far more appropriate than the Stuart version which feels limp in comparison. Feels like it should be sung at church or something. Ugh. Sorry people, but this really doesn't do anything for me. One of Rod's weakest by far. And the number one song on this week back in 1975 was... Can't Give You Anything But My Love by The Stylistics. Residing from Philadelphia and at one point had nine members of the group during their ongoing near 50 year career, The Stylistics are regarded as one of the most successful soul groups of the early 70s. From 72 through to 77, the group had 16 charting singles, 12 reached the top 20 with this track being their one and only number one hit. They released 22 studio albums where six charted in the UK, where only one cracked the top five. The rest failed to make the top 20, and the group were inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2004. But as I mentioned earlier, much like almost every act on this list, their success was very limited before they petered off once the music sheet shifted. The song is a nutshell, is about a man who, whilst he hasn't got a lot of money and won't be able to treat his girl like the queen that he thinks of her as, the one thing he can give her is his love. Oh, how sweet. And he says he's an ordinary guy with not a penny in his pocket. Yeah, um, I'm sorry to be that guy, but uh, love ain't gonna be putting food in the stomachs and clothes on your backs, mate. Love can only get you so far, and it sure ain't financially stable. Unless you're trying to get her to stick around because you want her cash, in which case, ah, uh, fuck you. But I'm being overdramatic here. Back to the song. It's not that good. I'm not a fan of the falsetto vocals that come from the now deceased lead singer Russell Tompkins Jr. The opening strings that border on white noise is pretty unbearable and the instrumentation overall feels like it's too imposing on the background vocalists which if it wasn't for the fact that the Tompkins vocals trounces the rest of the groups I'd struggle to hear what they were singing. Rather disappointing number one song here. Hey ho, here you go, those were the top 10 biggest selling singles back on this week, 1975. And I apologise for the light, it is pretty bad, I'm filming this quite late, but uh, that's what you get when you don't shill out on better lighting. But anyway, forgetting about that, what did you guys think of the songs? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Do you agree with my opinions, disagree with them? However you feel, leave your opinions in the comment section below, I welcome all comments. And until next time, I'm that song review guy. With better lighting next time, <laughs> take care.